I go back many years to start my tale, but I remember it as if it were yesterday. My poor father had recently passed away, and my mother and I continued to keep our inn, the Admiral Benbow. We entertained many a sailor, but none stranger than the man who started my adventure, Captain Billy Bones. I still recall the awful tune he used to croak. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. The ho ho and a bottle of rum. Drink and the devil has done for the rest. The ho ho and a bottle of rum. I'll take this room, lad. Yes, sir. Captain. They call me Captain Billy Bones. Lad, keep a weather eye open for a seafaring man with one leg. Yes, sir. Innkeeper! Innkeeper! What's your pleasure, sir? I seek an old seafaring mate, lad. <laughs> hey, Captain Billy Bones. The captain is a guest at our inn, sir. He's out walking, sir. You could await his return. I'll do that, lad. I'll do just that. And you can wait with me. Fifteen men on a dead man's chest. Yo ho ho and a bottle of rum. Captain Billy Bones. Black dog. Captain, <laughs> sit and drink with an old sailor mate. Rum lad, and be quick about it. Thank you, lad. Now be off with you, and let two old salts have a yarn about the sea. Yes, sir. Fetch a doctor. Uh. Oh dear, oh dear. Struck by a cutlass in my inn. Oh, this used to be such a nice neighborhood. It still is, ma'am. This man bears no cutlass wound. A stroke is what felled him. Too much rum, I'll wager. I'm telling you, as a doctor, and I'm ordering you as a magistrate, no more rum. Uh. Mm. Many thanks, Jim. What the doctors know, eh? Oh, you're a good mate, Jim. I can trust a good mate. That's what they're after, Jim. Somebody wants your old sea chest. No, lad. It's not the chest they want. It's that. Flint or Black Dog or the one-legged sailor. Promise me you'll keep it safe for me, Jim. Promise me that. I promise, Captain. I promise. Tell a poor blind man whereabouts he is. Hmm? You are at the Admiral Benbow Inn, good sir. Ah, a young voice. Young sir, will you give an old blind man a hand? Of course, sir. Ow! Let go! Now, boy, take me 
reach of the captain. Pew. Blind Pew. Hi. It's me, Bones. And I have a little present for you. <laughs> Open your hand, boy. But I... Ow! Place this in the captain's left hand. <gasps> the black spot. Ten o'clock. We'll do them yet. Ah! Uh, ah! Uh, ah! Uh. Are you sure we're doing the right thing, Jim? I'm an honest woman. Mother, he stayed at our inn. He ate our food and he drank a lot of our rum. We'll only take what we are owed. Here, Mother, you take out what is owed to us. Oh, we better hurry, Mother. I fear the blind man will be back with friends. I am an honest woman, Jim. I will take what is owed to us another farthing more. There. Three pounds, twelve shillings, and tuppence halfpenny. Exactly. Tis them. Quick, mother, we'll head toward the village. Don't let them get it, Jim. Promise me. We must hide, Mother. The moon's too bright and we'll be seen before we reach the village. Hide? I'm an honest... Mother, here. Hide under here. It's our only chance. Down with the door! Aye, aye! Chest is upstairs. Pew! Do you have it? The chest's been rifled already. It's gone. Gone. <sighs> the, the lad, he's taken it. I should have gouged that pup's eyes out while I had the chance. Ah, everybody out. The boy has what we want. Scatter and find him. He's close, lads. I can smell him. Shipmates! Horses! It's the revenue officers! It's all right, Mother. We're safe, thanks to Supervisor Dance. You can thank your neighbors, Jim. They raised the alarm. What were they after, Jim? Money? Not money. This. I think we should deliver it to Dr. Livesey without delay. Right you are, Jim. He's at Squire Trelawney's house. I'll take you there. My men will help you put your in right. Oh, I... Oh. Come, Jim, to Squire Trelawney's. So my mother and I hid under the bridge. And that's when the revenue officers rode down that blind beggar, eh? Yes, Squire. They tried to avoid him, but... No matter. He was a thorough scoundrel who got what he deserved. You have the package they were searching for, Jim? Should we open it? 
By heaven, yes. Let Jim open it at once. Hmm. Off Caracas, French merchantman, 2,000 gold louis. Latitude 62 degrees, 17 minutes, 20 seconds. Longitude 19 degrees, 2 minutes and 40 seconds. Spanish bark, 7,500 gold doubloons. Southwest shore of Jamaica, Captain Flint ordered. Captain Flint? You've heard of Captain Flint, I suppose. Heard of him? Oh, he, he was the bloodthirstiest buccaneer that ever sailed. I'd hazard that the journal is a list of the ships he sank and the treasure he plundered from them. I believe you're correct, Trelawney. Ship after ship, a fortune in gold. And that? Let us find out. Look, gentlemen. A cross. Bulk of treasure here. Treasure? Captain Flint's treasure. I'll start for the port of Bristol tomorrow. In three weeks' time, I'll have the best ship and the best crew in all England. No! Not three weeks, two weeks, ten days. Ten days? Yes, Jim Hawkins, ten days. You shall come as cabin boy, and you, Livesey, shall be the ship's doctor. And what shall you be, Trelawney? Why, I shall be the Admiral, of course. <laughs> The squire was as good as his word. Within two weeks, all was arranged. I farewelled my mother and the old inn and set off toward Bristol and the island of treasure. So as to supervise the fitting up of our vessel, Squire Trelawney was residing in an inn by the waterfront. Squire Trelawney. Ah, Jim Hawkins. Just the man I wanted to see. Now stow your luggage in here, Jim, and deliver this message to the Spyglass Inn. Long John Silver? Aye, Jim. Mr. Silver has assembled a first-class crew for us. A finer man you'll never meet. Well, off you go. be the man the captain meant. <laughs> <laughs> what can I do for you, young man? I seek a Mr. Silver, sir. Look no further, lad, for such be my name. Long John Silver, at your service. And this here be Captain Flint. What? At your service? What? What? At your service? A vast deal lover. What? What? <laughs> from Squire Trelawney. You must be the new cabin boy. Pleased to meet you. Stop that man! It's Black Dog! Ah, stop Black Dog! Stop Black Dog! <laughs> you won't catch him now, sure enough. Uh, who is he, lad? Black Dog, sir. He's a buccaneer. A buccaneer? In my inn? Oh, thanks for the warning, lad. He'll never set foot in here again. Mark my words. <laughs> ah, mark his words? Mark his words? Never again? Ah!
The next day, we were taken out to our ship, the Hispaniola, the squire and Dr. Livesey already being on board. Blow me down, tis John Silver and his cursed bird. Ah! Ah! All hands on deck! All decks on hands! Ah! Lads, Long John's aboard. This is me new mate, Jim Hawkins. Ha <laughs> ha, Jim lad. This here rascal is his frail hands. The best coxswain ever to swain a cox. Mighty handy with a knife, too. Pleased to meet you, Hawkins. Mr. Hans? Mr. Hans. Mr. Hans. Last time he was called Mr. Hans, he was on the gallows, ready to swing. I remember. He was... That's enough, Tom. Jim, lad. This here be Tom Morgan. He could give old Flint here a run for his money in the Gabin stakes. Mr. Morgan? Job Anderson. He may look harmless, but he's as strong as an elephant. Fat as one, too. <coughs> and this be George Merry. Merry be name, and miserable be nature. That right, George? Yeah. Pleased to meet you both. I'll show you the rest of these rascals later, Jim lad. <laughs> I reckon Captain Smollett's a lucky man. He's got the best crew of honest seamen England has to offer. What troubles you, Captain Smollett? The crew, sir. A greater bunch of villains and cutthroats I've never seen assembled in one place. Hmm. What do you suggest, Captain? I believe it would be wise if all the ship's weapons were kept locked in the stern during the voyage. I see no problem in that, Trelawney. No. Right, sir. With your permission, I will up anchor and set sail. Permission granted. The voyage went well. I was sure there was not a thing to concern us. Till one night. Are we going to take this cursed ship, Silver? Soon enough, Israel Ann. Soon enough. You've lost your nerve, Silver, just like you lost your leg. Patience, man, patience. Mutiny requires planning. We still have too many against us. Mutiny? I've had enough of that Smollett. He'll taste my steel, I vow. Aye, and that Trelawney is mine. I'll crush him with these bare hands. We'll have the ship. And the treasure soon enough. Hands, an apple for a one-legged seaman? Ooh. And Jim, a favor. Will you please fetch my tobacco and pipe, Jim? I'm afraid I've left them below. Of course, Doctor. Doctor, get the Captain and Mr. Trelawney down to the cabin. I must speak to you immediately. It was the cry of Land Ho that saved me, and no mistake. Remarkable. Mutiny! The dog's oil! I should have seen it coming. Good work, Hawkins. You kept your head well. Thank you, sir. But the question is, what do we do now? Fight the scum, of course. Blast them. What do you suggest we do, Captain? Nothing. Nothing? We are forearmed with the knowledge of their plot. I propose that young Hawkins keep his eyes and ears open and inform us of any developments. 
A spy? Exactly, sir. Hey, guys, Lads, it's been a long voyage, and no doubt you've got a taste for some dry land. As many as please may go ashore in the longboats. <laughs> If I was to be a spy, my place was with the crew, and preferably not seen by them. Stop, Jim Lad! He must be after the treasure. <laughs> <laughs> my plan was to double back and observe the crew from the sanctuary of the forest. I was rewarded soon enough. Uh, you'd have me mutiny? No, no. Kill innocent men? There'd be no killing. Just think of all that treasure. It's worth it, man. No, John. No mutiny's worth it. I must warn the captain. I wouldn't do that, matey. I must! This island is supposed to be deserted. I haven't spoken with a Christian these past three years, nor eaten no cheese, neither. Three years? Were you shipwrecked? Nay, mate. Marooned. Tell me your name, mate. I'll tell you my story. Jim. Jim Hawkins. Well, Jim Hawkins, I was aboard Captain Flint's ship, I was, when his treasure he buried here. I... Oh, this is mighty fine soft cloth, Jim Hawkins. That's not like these, eh? What happened? Ah, well, it was my misfortune to displease the great Captain Flint. How... Do you have any cheese, lad? Cheese? Aye, cheese. I haven't tasted these past three years. I can find some cheese, Mr Gunn. But pray, continue your tale. Oh, yes. Yeah. Here, tell me they were going to, but I begged for mercy. I, oh, I sure would love some cheese. Mr. Gunn. Ah, oh, sorry. They didn't kill me. They marooned me. Left me here on this godforsaken island with nothing more than a musket. Three years ago. Oh, now, about this cheese. Yeah? Alone? What have you done these past three years? I made uh, that. And that. <laughs> ah, Jim. <laughs> oh, and Jim. I looked and I looked and I looked and, 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 and finally I found it. I found it, Jim Hawkins. The ship. Quickly. <laughs> A stockade! A stockade? Here? Aye! Flint built it years and years ago. Does the flag mean there's some cheese in the stockade? Eh? I don't know what it means, Mr. Gunn. We were feared of a mutiny on our ship, and it looks like it might have happened already. Mutiny? Yes, mutiny. That one-legged cutthroat... One-legged? Not... Not Long John Silver? The same. Do you know the rascal, Mr. Gunn? Know him, I do. Oh, we sailed together under Captain Flint. Captain Flint? The parrot? 
No, lad. Captain Flint, the pirate. If Silver's taken the ship, oh, oh, he won't be finding me. They can't have taken the ship. Maybe, maybe not. But somebody's in the stockade. And with that flag, ah, sure ain't no pirates. So long, Jim. What about your cheese? Thought you were done for. How did you come to be here and the pirates aboard our ship? After we discovered you were gone, I decided to go ashore in the jolly boat and find out what was afoot. Hunter, a trusted man, and I rowed past the spit and away from the two longboats. We found the stockade, and I decided it was a more easily defended position than the ship. We loaded as many provisions as was possible and struck out for the stockade yet again. We managed five trips before the rascals twigged to our scheme. We lost the boat and a goodly amount of food and powder, but mercifully, no lives. The captain ran up the colours. They fired some more shot at us, but their aim was poor and their powder low. And that's where you found us, Jim. Fixed and ready to defend our little fort. Now, let's to bed. They won't bother us again this night. Flag of truce! Long John Silver himself! I'll be straight with you, Captain. We have no desire to harm you. All we want is the treasure. Is that so, Mr. Silver? What do you propose? The map, sir. If you give us the treasure map, you will not be harmed. You have my word. If you choose to keep the map, then we shall be forced to take it. Then, sir, take it, if you can. <laughs> 